Hi everyone and welcome to Health Trust TV. I'm Adam Morella and today we'll have a special episode in the field to show you how to maintain a healthy heart. Later I'll head out to one of our beautiful county parks, but first let's send it to Paloma as she shows you how to take advantage of the new bike share program here in San Jose. Thank you, Adam. I'm here in St. Pedro Square in downtown San Jose, and with me is Simon Denton from the Bike Share Program. Thank you, Simon, for being with us today. You're welcome. So, can you tell us a little bit about your program? All right, so I'm introducing the sort of Bay Area Bike Share. That's the new expansion of, or the extension of the Bay Area Bike Share Program, which is based in San Francisco, San Jose, and it also has locations in Mountain View, Palo Alto, and Redwood City. It's got approximately 700 bicycles spread across 70 different stations throughout the Bay Area. How long has this program been around? Um, the Bay Area Bike Share was initially launched in September 2013, so it's been going for a couple of months now and it's been proved to be quite successful. So why San Jose? Uh, San Jose was an extension of our sort of service area, primarily due to the way our grant funding was acquired through a combination of partners, primarily the Bay Area Air Quality Management District and the VTA were our big sponsors as far as getting it extended right down to the San Jose through the peninsula and back up to the city. Oh, okay. So who's sponsoring this effort? Um, it's a combination of our private company and the SFMTA, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, the VTA and a number of other local body partners. How do people use the bikes? The easiest way to use a system is either using a credit card that you can put into a kiosk and then you can be given a receipt that will have a number on it which you can put into the station and it will release a bicycle. Alternatively you can actually get access to the system with an annual membership and it will issue you with a key that looks very similar to this. Oh, This great. will give you direct access and you don't have to liaise with the kiosk. How much does it cost to use a bike? Um, bike sharing for a short term membership which is 24 hour access to the system is $8 and then so trips that are 30 minutes in duration or less at no additional fees and trips over that cost slightly more. There is additionally a three day membership that you can get access to for a number of hours and then as well the cheapest or most effective option is to do an annual membership which is $88 per year. So there's three payment options. Are they all allowed to use the bikes in the same one city or can they use them in multiple cities? So all of our locations, this the gives you access to the entire system so you can get a key will work in the city right down to San Jose or you can get a number at this station for example and you can go to San Francisco on the train use the number again and you'll be able to get another bike out just the same. How long are you allowed to use the bike once you've paid? So the idea of the system is to use very short duration trips so it's 29 minutes or less is the way the system is designed so all of the stations are located in relatively close proximity that you can make it from station to station very easily they're spread around the system, but they're also tied in with the Caltrain line, so you can travel on the train without your bicycle, get off at the other end, use your key or use your pin to access another bicycle in a new area of the system. So safety is always a concern when riding a bike. Do people rent helmets or are they available at the stations? So Bay Area Bikes, we definitely encourage people to bring their own helmet. It is designed for those 18 or older, so it's primarily for adults, people that are using it mostly to commute or maybe sightseeing or going traveling, but we do have on the Bay Area Bike Share website, we have a account or a $10 credit towards a burn helmet is available to subscribers so you can get a subsidized helmet. Where are the bike stations located throughout San Jose? Um, the stations are primarily based in central San Jose around the downtown business district and slightly north of San Jose. We have 16 locations here in San Jose. Where can people go to learn more information and sign up for annual memberships? Um, probably the best source of information would be on our website which is bayareabikeshare.com or we have a Twitter and a Facebook page as well. Thank you Simon for all that wonderful information. You're welcome. And now let's pass it over to Adam at Alvisa Marina Park. Thanks Paloma, I'm here at Alviso Marina Park and joining me today is Acting Outdoor Recreation Coordinator Heidi McFarland. Hello Heidi and thanks for joining us today. Hi Adam, thank you. Yep, so Heidi, uh, Santa Clara County Parks prides itself on having a network of vast regional parks all connected through scenic highways and trails. Tell us about those parks and trails and also the outdoor activity opportunities that Santa Clara County is offering to its residents. Well Santa Clara County Parks now has added its 29th park to our system 
and uh, and we have an extensive network of trails in all of our parks that you can visit and we've got a lot of different programs through our website that you can visit and mm -hmm. see the different dates and activities that are listed anything from taking a hike with your family and children to big special events you know where you can go and see special exhibits. I personally love hiking. I think it's a great way to get out and enjoy nature and exercise at the same time. So I understand it that Santa Clara County Parks is, is currently encouraging the residents to get out and enjoy the park system and you're doing that through your Healthy Trails program. Can you tell us about the program? Yeah, we are just so lucky here to have so many different parks surrounding our communities and the Healthy Trails program is on its third edition of the booklet. We've done a, it since 2006. Mm -hmm started out with the first edition and so we're on the third edition now and it's separated out all the different trails at our different parks we've sort of featured trails that our park staff has recommended as a good starting out point for new hikers and they're so they're also categorized by easy moderate strenuous so mm -hmm. that you can sort of determine what your level is going into it That's and uh, and not feel intimidated about going out there and trying sure. out some new trails that you're not familiar with. Sure, that sounds awesome. So how do you go about enrolling in this program? Well, it's real easy. It's set up on our website. So you can go to our front page of www.parkhere.org mm -hmm. and uh, click on the Healthy Trails link and it'll send you through the system to start registration right there online. Or you can, we have a, a little brochure that you can pick up from any of our parks or park offices. Oh, perfect. And you can mail it in or fax it in. That's That works as well. Perfect. That's awesome. So what about enrollment? How much does it cost to enroll? It's free. It's that's, free. That's the best part That's about even it. better. It's that's free. even no better. Cost. As a matter of fact, we send you things as a thank you. Right. So, and like you said earlier, not everyone's an experienced hiker. So how do you go about kind of finding out which trails you can use for your level? Well, the booklet makes it really easy to use. It's user-friendly by categorizing the trail, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, by easy, moderate, and strenuous. But when you open up to the correct page of the hike that you're looking at, it's it's highlighted on the map. So there's a it, it highlights the whole route that, oh, perfect. that is that particular Healthy Trails route. And not to mention that we also have a lot of guided hikes that are available to the public oh, even with better. park staff leading them. So if you're not real familiar with that park, it's your first time there, you can look up on our calendar of events and see if anyone's going to be leading a hike out there at that particular location. So once a person signs up, how much time do they have to complete the program? You know, they can take as much time as they want to. They can take a year to complete it. You know, some people complete it in just a few months. So it's really at your own pace and that's another really nice thing about it. There's only five trails that mm -hmm. you need to complete within however long it takes you to complete them. So besides the benefit of exercise, do participants receive any awards for completing the program? They do. They oh, get good. a nice little pin to, as a token of our appreciation for them completing the challenge. There's also some other, if they complete it, they can repeat it multiple times. So they can get other little incentives like bandanas or little backpacks, first aid kits, things like that. So where can people go for more information about the program? The website's the best place to go, parkhere.org. Okay. And, and it's front and center, and you'll, that's where you can also find our calendar of events where all of our wonderful guided hikes and activities and events are listed. Perfect. So, Heidi, thank you so much for telling us about the trail yeah, program. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to sign up? I'm going to sign up. I'm definitely going to sign up. I'm a hiker, so that's awesome. So, all thank right. you. So I'll definitely be enrolling in the program, as of all of you should at home, because hiking is a great way to keep the heart healthy. Coming up, Elena will go over one of her healthy choices, but first we're going to send it to a San Jose City Council member, Pete Constant, for a special message.